so we're back uh, and the next portion, the next step that I wanted to put in a segmented section, not only due to the time limitations, but also because uh, this is the portion where if you do this, you have you run a risk of basically damaging your system. Probably not in a physical sense, but rather instead in a software sense, because uh, you will most likely be, if something goes wrong, uh, there is very little that you can do most likely you will have to do a clean ring install. And I have stated this in the very beginning several times. I have stated that this is not a recommended setup, but here you go, here is how you can do it. Uh, so first off, we're gonna go over to the net and you can take a look at this site, but I will also give you a link and or the file which you can download, but feel free to take a look at the site as well if you wish. So it says that the current, uh, this is the tool that you're going to need. It says that RFID is a boot menu and maintenance toolkit for RFID based machines like Intel Max. And also it says, as you may have noticed, RFID is no longer actively maintained. Please check out RFEND a fork that is maintained and under active development. So you can also go with that one. I've had some problems with it and I figured since I have a very since I have an older Mac from 2011, I'm going to go ahead and use this one instead, the older one. But you can also go and try with that one as well. I have tried and had limited success. So, uh, I'm just I'm not going to download it, but this is the one that we will be using. It's a Mac disk image RF, RFET and we're gonna I'm gonna go into the oh hold on should be around here somewhere uh, in the downloads so ND you can see that I have indeed downloaded this one but this is a DMG file so yep just down, double click on it and it's gonna go ahead and open it oh, God, come on don't do this to me Please. There you go. And this is what you need. MPKG. Just double click on it. And it's going to take you through the installation procedure. I already have it here, but yeah, just click, 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 click through the end. That's it. And this might actually mess your, mess your system up. So keep it in mind. There's nothing special here. It's just continue, uh, license, continue, agree. Uh, you can just go ahead and click on the install here and then the installation goes through and the rest. So there's no special options or something like that that you need to select here. It's uh, basically click and go. No big deal, unless you wish to customize something, which I definitely would not recommend at this time. So this file will be provided, of course, but you can also go ahead and check out the site and download it from here if you wish. Okay, so now I am going to go ahead and basically minimize this. And we're going to go ahead and switch to my phone now from where I'm going to record the rest of the video because I need to reboot the machine and show you how it is uh, how it is done. So let's go ahead and call it here and I'll be back in a moment where we will do the stated. Okay so welcome back I guess and now I switch to my phone. So uh, I have changed this a little bit it's now Kali 2.02 completely irrelevant to you I've just renamed it to something more appeasing to my eyes but it's not gonna affect you in any in any possible way so you can do that too you can redo the procedure and the beginning you can label it as Kali 2 if you want I've shown you where you can relabel the devices with uh, with the disk utilities in Mac but it's completely irrelevant. Just uh, I would suggest that you go ahead and follow through. I'm a perfectionist, so yeah, it was kind of just stabbing me in my eyes. Anyway, let's go. So over here, you have a I I I have a power cord attached to MacBook. So something you I advise you to have during this 
a USB that we've just made. It's plugged in directly, uh, not through a hub or anything like that. This is a USB hub, so I didn't use a USB hub. I did try doing it via USB hub. Seems to work fine, but on some forums they suggested and advised against it. Now that you have all of this set up, I would I advise you now to go ahead and shut your machine down. Not reboot, shut it down, like completely. So let's go and I'm pretty sure you can see the letters, but even if you can't, all you need to do is shut the machine down, quite literally. Okay, yes, I would like to reopen the windows and please shut down. Okay, let the seeding stop. Just seeding Kali Linux upon download. Okay, so anytime, anytime. And here you can actually see me in my t-shirt that I've been wearing for days now. And behind me, the rest of my place, I guess. In the reflection of the screen. After this, I'm going to go ahead and answer all of your questions on Udemy. And I'm going to hit the shower in bed. So, uh, down here, I have a power button. It could be in a bit of a different place for you, but basically all you need to do is power the machine back on. So, power button, very important. Keep an eye on it, know where it is. You're going to need to press it again later on. So, let's go ahead and power the machine back on. Okay, you can hear the CD and the boot and whatnot. It's going, you can see in the left corner, my finger is now that the USB is blinking and this is a non-standard Mac boot. You can see that it says RFET. So let's go ahead and select what we need. Okay, let me just zoom in a little bit so that you can read the letters because they are a bit more important now. So we got boot FE. Uh, now we need manager. Now this is not gonna work, I've tried it. Uh, if it works for you, great. If not, uh, just go ahead and select the one that I have selected. It says boot FE boot grub 64.fe and that is the one that I shall boot now. So go for it. You get this uh, pro you get this uh, GNU grub version 2.0. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say boot persistent, yeah, even though it's not going to matter in a sense that it usually does, but we will still have a persistent partition there. So let's go ahead and say boot persistent more me. Take a good long look if you like. Down here it's just reading, 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 loading, loading, loading. Fine, whatever. Just go for it. I mean you can feel free to read if you like, but it doesn't really matter. Just something that the system is doing and then it's informing us of what it is actually doing. And going through, going through Come on. Oh man, there's a lot. Okay, so there is a there will be a catch during the boot up procedure where we will need to play around with the power button a little bit. Don't worry, we won't need to open up anything or do anything like that. So you see it just boots and well it doesn't actually boot. It just uh, there's a blank there's a black screen and then there is a flashing USB. I am sincerely hoping that you have a USB that flashes. If you don't, uh, after the black screen appears, give it 10 minutes and do the following. If you have a flashing one, well, just wait for it, like I do. Okay, the flashing seems to have stopped and you can see that the machine, you see this light here, it's not in standby mode or anything like that. If you come close to the machine, you can still hear the fan spinning. And I'm gonna go ahead, maybe you can hear it here as well. Look, the power button, so it's right here. Do a short press on the power button. So a very short press will do. Don't hold it for long. If you hold it for long, you're going to mess it up because you're going to power the machine down completely. So keep an eye on this. So on the, on the light and let's go ahead and power the machine back on. Well, not just wake it up, I guess. Just press it once. And you can see that the lid has turned on and now it's slowly flashing, painfully slow. Then press it again. So I did a one short press and now I'm going to do a second short press. Second short press was done and there we go. It 
it's going through the procedure again. There you go, voila, Kali is here and running. So we can go ahead and log in. Password will be T O O R, the default password and the default username will be root. And there you go, uh, Kali is running. Uh, you, it's semi-persistent. You have the persistence partition in the upper right corner here. Let's open it up. So this is a persistent partition and everything else that is on the on the other partition which we have created is not persistent. So on this partition you can make one small script and then just bash script and then just issue a set of commands which you want to run. So when the machine boots, open up your persistent partition and run the script. All of your all that is saved here where my mouse is moving and my hand is moving on this partition casper-rw is permanent. You can also name it any other way because Casper is for, yeah, the way I explained it in on a PC. So I just kept the name. But uh, anything that you save here will be persistent. Uh, anything else on any other partition will not survive a reboot. So any actions that you take or something of a kind, you can save them here and then just continue from there. If you want your configuration saved, more importantly on your Kali, uh, you can make a bash script with a set of commands that you would type in the terminal exactly the same and just run the bash script and those commands will execute one by one and it will configure your Kali every every time you boot, you run the script once and it configures it to your preference. So just create the script here and that's it. If you need help with the bash script, feel free to reach out to me in the discussion section. You know, I'm always there to help. I answer as many questions as I can on pretty much daily basis. But for these couple couple of days, I've been really stuck with this nearly an impossible job to create a boot on Kali on MacBooks that are older than 2012, 2013, 14, something like that. That's gonna work without any problems. Just plug and play. Uh, use that program that I've showed you. Create a USB, and it's going to. And it. I mean, I've tested it out on a MacBook 2013. It works without Retina display. It works without any problems whatsoever. I do believe it was Retina. I don't hold my word to it, but it doesn't really matter. Just the year matters. So it works without any problems. But on older ones, it's uh, it's truly a painful experience. All the files that you will need for this will be on Udemy, either in a form of a link, or either they will or they will actually be there from where you can download them. Anyway, this concludes this chapter with Max. If you have any questions with Max, feel f or in regard to Max, feel free to reach out to me in the discussions once again. And uh, again, at the end of this tutorial, I'm just gonna go of this chapter. I'm going to say that I do not recommend this on a Mac at all. First of all, running a risk of being forced to reboot your system, and basically. A high chance that you will encounter problems, difficulties, and so on and so forth. That said, I bid you all farewell, and I hope that I have helped at least some of you achieve uh, your goals.